In this extended movie, I'm going to show you how to use the Objective-C PD-specific classes from my series Learning Live PD for iOS within a Swift project. I've created a project folder called Live PD Swift. Before getting started with an Xcode project, let's take a look at a few things within this folder. First, I've already downloaded the PD for iOS repository from GitHub. More importantly, I've made sure its submodules have been initialized and updated. Second, I've created a PD patch called Main PD that toggles on and off a simple sine wave at 440 Hz. Notice the Receive On Off object. This object is key for enabling interaction between the Swift code and the PD patch. Third, I've got two Objective-C files that I created in my series Learning Live PD for iOS. These files are for an Objective-C class called PD Patch that inherits from NSObject. With Xcode already open, I'm going to quickly create a new single view iPhone application coded in Swift. I'll store it within the root of the LivePD project folder. Importing LivePD into a Swift project is no different than importing it into an Objective C project. Here, I'm going to very, very quickly import LivePD into this project. If you'd like to see a much slower and more methodical approach to this, Check out my series, Learning Live PD for iOS. The first important step to getting Live PD to work within a Swift project is the creation of a file called a bridging header. This file is a plain header file, and I'll create one now. I'll name it libpdswift-bridging-header.h and I'll save it within the same folder as my other Xcode project files. It's really important that I remember the path to this file as I'll need it in a moment. Before continuing, I'll make sure that I set the file to appear within the libpdswift group and I'll mark all of the applicable targets. In the bridging header file, we're going to write an import statement for all of the necessary LibPD headers. Specifically, we'll import pdaudiocontroller.h and pddispatcher.h. Doing this will allow all the classes contained within these headers to be available across our entire Swift project. The most important and final step is next. We need to tell the compiler that we've got a bridging header file. If we don't do this, LibPD simply won't work within the Swift project. I'll click on LibPD Swift and then Build Settings. I'll search for Bridging Header. To set the file, I'll double click on the Objective C Bridging Header line and then type the path to the file from the root of the Xcode project. LibPD is ready to use within the Swift project. The rest of our work will focus on initializing PD, importing the Objective C PD patch class files, and integrating the PD patch with the view controller. We'll head to the file appdelegate.swift to initialize the PD audio controller. We'll create a variable called PD of the type PD audio controller. Within the application function, we'll initialize the PD audio controller. Then, we'll start the instance and get its status update. Lastly, we'll create a conditional check for the constant pdinit. At this point, if you're using a version of Swift earlier than version 2, the compiler might complain about the pdinit enum. There's a huge difference between enums in Swift and enums in C or Objective-C. This portion of the code isn't really necessary to continue, so if you want to get rid of it or skip it, please feel free to do so. The final thing we need to do within this file is we need to deactivate the PD engine when the application resigns active, and then reactivate it when the application becomes active. I've already created a user interface ahead of time. We'll head to the viewcontroller.swift file, and we can see that I've connected a UI switch to an action called on switch change. I'll copy the PD file into the project and add it to all of the targets. 
The last step is to import the PD patch class that was written in Objective C into our Swift project. When copying the files into our Swift project, Objective C prompts us to create a bridging header file. We don't need to do this because we already created one earlier. In order to use the PD patch Objective C class, I need to head to the bridging header file and add an import statement for pdpatch.h. The class is now ready to use. I'll head to the view controller, create a reference for the patch that is of the type PD patch. I'll go to viewed load and initialize the PD patch with the name of the PD patch to use as a string. Lastly, I'll pass the value of the on off switch to the patch using its on off method. Let's build and run to test the application. The switch toggles the sine wave on and off just as we planned. That's all for this lesson on using LivePD with Swift. If you haven't already done so, take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'm Dr. Rafael Hernandez, and until we learn together again, take care.